I committed uh, to listening very carefully and abiding by the recommendations that the, uh, that, uh, the former Governor General made. Uh, and he uh, explained and justified his thought processes by it, and we will be following his recommendations. The Prime Minister there saying he's satisfied with former Governor General David Johnston's decision not to call a public inquiry into alleged elections meddling and hold public hearings instead on how to tackle the issue looking ahead. The opposition, however, is rejecting the report, saying an inquiry is essential. But is it a red line for the NDP, who currently prop up the Liberal minority government, Jagmeet Singh, is the leader of the NDP. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to see you. Thank you very much for making the time. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, why, from your perspective, is an inquiry still needed after Mr. Johnston determined there was no malfeasance on the part of any politician involved? Well, I, I respect the work of Mr. Johnston, but the concern that I have is there's a lot of unanswered questions. And what the public inquiry will do is answer those questions about what the government knew, when they knew it, and why they did or did not take action around that. There's a certain rigor involved with the public inquiry. The fact that multiple lawyers will be asking questions directly of ministers and the prime minister and security forces. That, that rigor and that, that scrutiny and that attention to how serious this is will, in my belief, give Canadians confidence that we are taking the allegations of foreign interference seriously and that we are taking clear steps to remedy it. That is so important given in my opinion, how important it is to make sure people believe that their votes matter, that elections work, and that the ele electoral system is something they can have confidence so people actually get out and vote. That, that to me is really deeply important, and I think that we can restore that confidence by having something as robust as a public inquiry while still protecting national security. The questions that you raise, though, that you say are still unanswered around who knew what and when are essentially answered by Mr. Johnston in his report. And he comes to the conclusion that nothing was brought to the prime minister's or his minister's attention that, uh, that, that sort of shows that, that was willfully ignored, basically. Like, that nobody knew something and ignored it willfully in order to further their, their own advances. What beyond that do you think an inquiry will actually determine? Well, I can give one example of something that Mr. Johnson found that I think more, more questions would be very beneficial. For example, under, in the Hangdong situation, it's become very clear that, that the Prime Minister was aware, that the government was aware that there were irregularities. Now, they weren't provided with any actionable items. They weren't told to take this, uh, this step or not take this step. But the fact that there were irregularities raised, and from what we have learned from Mr. Johnson, there was no follow-up taken. No additional questions asked. No follow-up in terms of what should we do. No decision made by the Prime Minister or the Liberal Party to then say, well, given these irregularities, we're going to take this action to remedy that or to maybe have another process in place. The fact that they just received information, which was a red flag, and then didn't do anything because they weren't told to do anything, to me shows a lack of responsibility with something as serious as that. The fact that there was communication breakdowns between the security forces and CSIS and the, the government, the fact that that communication breakdown occurred raises more questions. Why did it occur? How did it occur? And we're relying on Mr. Johnson's work. He asked these questions and received these responses. And on public inquiry, the public will see these questions being asked and multiple people asking these questions. And then the independence of a judge to determine whether or not some of that should be deemed confidential to protect national security and what amount of that could be remained public. We've got a template of how that works with the Emergencies Act Commission and the Rouleau Commission. It showed us a template for lots of information was confidential, could not be disclosed, but a lot of information, much more, was disclosed to the public. But that gave people confidence that the process was followed and people were able to have confidence in the decision. With all due respect, though, Mr. Singh, I, I think Mr. Johnson's point today was the salient bits of information, right? The classified information that he was able to view in order to make the determination about the various allegations as they were reported by media, that stuff would not be available publicly. So again, is it, and, and I think this is the way the, the, the government would characterize it, is it just kind of a fishing expedition on your part or other opposition parts in order to keep this ish issue top of mind, even when there isn't the proof there that, you know, the Prime Minister and his colleagues acted in a willful way to mislead Canadians? Well, it, we're not talking about uh, the misleading of Canadians. I, I'm actually, I would still hold, based on the findings of Mr. Johnston, that there was a willful blindness, absolutely. That when red flags were raised to the government, to the Prime Minister, to ministers, 
when concerns are raised by CSIS, CSIS did not provide them with steps that they recommended. But the government didn't follow up. And I gave the example of, uh, of Hangdong, where there were irregularities raised around the nomination process by CSIS, and they didn't recommend any course of action. They just said there's some irregularities. But I would think someone would take that seriously, that the prime minister, the ministers, the liberal government would take that seriously and say, okay, given that there's irregularities raised here, even though we're not being told to take any particular action, we should do a follow-up here. We should find out, well, what do those irregularities mean? Uh, well, how does that impact the outcome? Maybe we need to have another process in place. Do we need to redo the nomination meeting given these irregularities? None of that follow-up happened. So what I would say, a public inquiry would allow for these type of questions to be asked. Why weren't there any follow-ups? Why not uh, ask additional questions? Why not pursue another course of action to remedy those irregularities? Why didn't those steps, uh, why weren't those steps ta taken? There's a lot of questions that remain. And for me, the fundamental why this is all important is because people should be able to vote. And I've seen a declining voter turnout. And we know there's many reasons to it, but one of those has to be making sure people feel that they can vote, that their vote matters, that the electoral systems, they can have something that they can have confidence in. And these type of allegations, I'm sure, will erode some of that confidence. And I want to restore that. Well, we don't. I can. I can see why you would, um, you know, presuppose that or guess that. But I, but we don't have any proof at this point that that is what has contributed or to what degree it might have to a declining voter turnout. Now, just before I let you go, Mr. Singh, though, I, I do want to ask you kind of how big of a deal is this to you? And you know, this question is coming. It, it certainly comes with every issue that you raise. But right now, in effect, you are keeping the government in power. Is this something you're willing to force? And by that, would you? By that, I mean, would you withdraw your support of the government over this issue? That's not a decision we're taking today. Uh, we, we believe that Mr. Johnson's work should continue. He's, he's uncovered some important findings, and those are, those are important things for Canadians to know about. But I remain resolute that we do need a public inquiry. So I'll be sitting down with the Prime Minister to let the Prime Minister know I believe in a public inquiry is still required. And I'll be also letting the Prime Minister know that we'll be using all tools that we have at our disposal to continue to push for one. Okay, Mr. Singh, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you.